Hi, this is going to be a continuation of the discussion of layers and Bezier path. Um, in the last video, we made a simple, you know, widget here with a circle. And, you know, if we drag the slider here, it kind of draws a circle. And that's okay. Um, you know, it still needs some work to be more useful and to be more flexible and fit more situations. Um, you know, it, one of the things that's wrong here is, you know, starting at this point is a little odd. It might be nicer if we could start here and end about here, right? Um, <clears throat> so let's, and then it might also be nice, like instead of having a solid line, maybe we want to have like a dashed line or something, right? Um, I have a drawing here in Sketch, and this is kind of the thing that I would like to build, right? So it'll take us a few steps to get here, but, you know, essentially I want the line to start here and go all the way around to here. And then maybe I'd like the line to be filled with a gradient and also use sort of a dashed line rather than a solid line, okay? So, um, so how would we do this in Xcode? So uh, let's go back to Xcode here and take a look, right? So first of all, um, in our circle path class, we've used the um, uh, Bezier oval in rectangle or oval in rec to to define the rectangle. So, or to define the the the, the circle, right? So this is kind of subpar for what we want to do. We want to do a perfect circle, and we want to start somewhere and end somewhere. We don't want to draw a complete circle. So this isn't going to work for us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this stuff here and then just create a Bezier path with no parameters okay so this just gives us an empty path like there's a path with no points or lines on it right and what I want to do is I'm going to use Bezier paths add arc with center method okay so this lets us draw a circle with a center point okay we include a radius and then it also gives us a start angle and an end angle and then a rotation direction property okay Pardon me. So here it is, right? Start angle or with center, start angle, end angle, and then clockwise we set true or counterclockwise is false. Okay, so we got to fill in all these parameters. So the first thing we need is we need a center point. So why don't we do this? Why don't we make a couple variables? I'll say cx equals um, bounds dot width divided by two. Okay, so that's the the horizontal center. CY equal bounds um, dot height divided by two, right? So now that's our vertical center. So now let's make a center point. We'll just call it C, and we'll say is a CG point with an X of CX and a Y of CY. Okay, so that's our center point. So we can put that here. Okay, now we need a radius. So I don't know what to do for the radius. We could make this the radius that is the size of the view, and that's probably a good choice, or we could just type a number in there. So why don't we do that? Why don't we um, make a number here? Let's just say let width equal, uh, you know, bounds dot width divided by two. I guess actually, you know what? It's gonna be the same as CX, so why don't we just take that, right? Because remember, radius is, is half of the diameter, right? So maybe we could just put CX in there. Now, this could be a problem if our view is more is taller or wider, right? You know, maybe our, our circle's not going to fit there. So if we might want to put some logic in that found the smaller direction, you know, half the height or half the width, right? <clears throat> but for right now, we'll just take half the half the width, okay? So now here's our start angle. Now, when we draw an arc around the circle, let's go take a look at our drawing and sketch here. Um, the um, the starting point is usually here. Okay, we saw that in the other um, in the other example, right? I pointed out it's going to start here and then go around the circle, and the distance around the circle is measured in radians. So the distance from here all the way around the circle is two pi. You should see my other video on circle math, and it goes over the whole you know the whole example of radians and um, and sine and cosine, and it explains it pretty good. So, um, so you can go, you can review it in that video if you're if you're not sure on how radians work here. But essentially, from here all the way around the circle is six point two eight approximately, so two pi, right? So what we want to do is we want to start here. 
So this point is about like if, if this is zero and that's one eighth and this is one quarter, this is three eighths. So it's like one eighth, two eighths, three eighths. And then if we keep going around the circle from here to the starting point is eight eighths. So one more eighth here is nine eighths. Okay, so this is three, this point here is three eighths of two pi. <laughs> okay, and this point here, if we go around clockwise, is nine eighths of two pi. Okay, right? So I know that sounds a little weird. Well, let's do it with numbers here, right? In, in code. So let's say, first let's get pi. So I'm going to just make pi. They, they actually have a variable here that is m pi. That's the number pi, right? But this is actually, it. it is a, um, what is it here? It's a, it's a double, so it doesn't really work. We have to convert this to a float. And our whole circle is really 2 pi, right? So really what I want here is I want um, cg float um, m pi times 2, right? So that's our 2 pi. That's our whole circle, right? And then what we'll do is we'll say let start point equal um, pi 2 times um, 3 eighths. So we can just say 3 divided by 8, right? And then we'll say end point is going to be um, pi 2 times 9 divided by 8. Okay? And then, um, you know, you could work this out mathematically any other way, but this is kind of an easy way for me to do it right where I understand it, right? So we'll put start here, and then we'll put end over here. This is like end angle, right? And then clockwise, right? So we want to go around clockwise. If we did this counterclockwise, it would be a completely different um, circle, right? It wouldn't quite look right. So we got to make sure that we put true here, okay? And there we go. So now we've created a path right, UI Bezier path, and this time instead of just defining a default oval in a rectangle, we're going to add an arc to our path, right, so this is going to be the arc that we draw, and we're going to draw it around this center point with this radius, start angle, end angle, and we're going in a clockwise direction. So let's give that a try, right, we'll give it a test here, and let's see, Oh, there we go, right? So there's our starting point. There's our ending point. Not bad, right? Um, why don't we also add a dashed line here just for fun? So um, to do the dashed line, let me describe it here with Sketch really quick, right? So Sketch has a pretty good way to describe this. If we're in Sketch, um, it's a little hard to read here, but if I, if I go to the path here and I click on the little options there, gap, dash gap, right? So you can set what the dash is. So if I make the dash two pixels, and then I set the gap to two pixels, you know, this is what we get, right? If I set the dash to 10 pixels and the gap to two pixels, it looks like this. But if I set the gap to 10 and the dash to 10, you know, it's going to look, you know, so I'm saying like the first number here is saying like how much, you know, stroke we should see and the second number is like how much space there should be between each one of these strokes, right? And we can kind of continue with that. And, um, you know, you could, add, you could add other spacing in there, right? So uh, let me put that back to what I had it before. I think I had it at four and two, right? I kind of like that. Um, and you know what? In, um, in our shape layer, there is a property here. I'll go to shape layer dot, um, oh yeah, there it is, line dash pattern. And you'll see that this is an NS number in an array, right? So it's an array of numbers. And essentially, it works the same way that it does in Sketch. So if I make an array and I say it's going to be four pixels with a gap of two pixels or points, right? This is going to be four point of line, right? And then with a two point gap, and then it'll repeat. And you can put more items in here to create you know, different patterns in your, in, your, in your dashed line, but I can just put these two numbers in there and then we'll give it a test, right? Um, so this should be four and two. And then we'll, we'll drag this and you can see now we have a, a dashed line, right? So anyway, so thanks for watching and that will be um, the end of this example. And in the next example, we'll talk about um, UI gradient layer or CA gradient layer 
and we'll talk about how we can give our stroke sort of a gradient fill, okay? So anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope that that is interesting.